Hey, all Tom Rand here from Tom's Big Spider. So obviously it's been a couple weeks since I posted a longer video. I'm back to school, time's at a premium. So we're trying to get some of these in while I'm also trying to prepare for school. So what better way to come back after taking a couple weeks off than looking at a Formictopus species? For those of you that know, I absolutely adore the genus Formictopus. I try to grab every one of them out there and I'm raising a bunch up currently to see if they're actually different from what we've already had in the hobby for quite some time. Unfortunately, back when I started buying up all the Formictopus species I could find, they weren't nearly as popular as say Panthobedius or kind of like the bargain brand Panthobedius. And they were usually readily available for at least a little while and not particularly expensive expensive. But now that they become more popular, you're seeing more and more of them out there under new exotic species names. And we're honestly not sure what we have. Some of these could be brand new species that are yet to be discovered and described. Some of them may just be different colorations of ones we already have on the market. And in some cases, they may be the exact same spiders we've already had in our collections for quite some time. So what I'm trying to do is grow these up, kind of make notes about what they look like as they go through their life cycle, the color changes they go through, and try to figure out, are these in the very least different, quote unquote, species. So today we're going to be taking a look at Formictopus species by Ahibe. I believe it's like pink something birdie. There's a bunch of common names for it. I don't know what they are. I think they're just being made up on the fly. But anyway, these guys are supposed to be one of the big purple spiders. I obviously have two Dominican violets that I absolutely adore. Well, I've seen pictures of supposed Bayahibes that are grown up in adults, and the females are purple and pink and kind of the same lines of a violet, but not quite as dark. So they do look to be different spiders. At least they have different coloration. They're both from the Dominican Republic, so we'll see as time goes on if they're actually the same spider. I'm holding out hopes that they are not. Right now, you'll see with these guys here, they're kind of looking a little bit more like Formictopus cancerides. However, I have an older specimen that is actually showing some purple. So fingers crossed, we get a totally different looking spider. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at Formictopus species by Ahibe. Oh, the crickets in the background. I don't miss that. All right. So we're about to rehouse two Formictopus species by Ahibe. I'm going to open this up and see if this one behaves so Billy can get some shots of it. There is one of them which is looking very much like a P. cancerides with the exception of that bright red kind of hairs on the booty. But anyway, I got three of these back in May of 2021 from KF Inverts. Obviously, I try to buy every Formictopus quote unquote species I see on the market. And these guys were out, there wasn't a lot on them except supposedly they turn a beautiful purple color. So back when I got these guys, they were about an inch and a half to two inches or 3.81 to 5.08 centimeters. So they had already outgrown their blue stage of the Formictivus species from the island of Hispaniola all start off blue and then they start getting their adult color. So they already had graduated out of their blue stage, which I found interesting because they weren't that big yet. So it did make me think they are something different than the standard for Mictibus cancerides or any of the other Dominican species. And as you can see from the footage here, They've already starting, obviously not looking like adults, but they've graduated out of that sling stage and are showing some interesting colors. So normally if I were to get these guys as like little slings, half inch, three quarter inch slings, a 20 ounce, I use 20 ounce deli cups, a 16 ounce deli cup would work just fine for them or something around that size. Moist substrate, give them some room to burrow. These guys did appreciate some room to burrow early on and stayed out of sight. They remind me a lot behavior wise of the auratus that I raised up. They were kind of shy. So for the sling containers, I originally used these plastic containers. I happen to have three of them and I was trying to keep them into something that was similar. So I used these, I think they're made for like model cars or something. I don't know, I picked them up from somewhere, but they're about eight inches by four inches by three inches or 20.32 by 10.6 by 7.62 centimeters. They gave them a little bit of depth, set them up as I normally do with cork bark hide. They immediately burrowed under the cork bark hide and they pretty much stayed out of sight. And hunting wise, they weren't quite as zealous as some of my other Formictivus species. They would kind of bolt out, grab a prey at them. They wouldn't take necessarily the big prey items like other ones would, but they ate well. This one's kind of creeping around. So I'll keep an eye. Hopefully some of the femurs action is coming out because there are, well, little bit of purple on some of the femurs. Anyway, I then went and rehoused them. And when I rehoused them, I put one of them into one of the M design containers because it was much bigger than the other ones. Those are about 12 and a quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches by about seven inches. So what I ended up rehousing the other two into were the Sistema 1830 clippets that are about nine and a third inches, 6.7 inches this way. And I think 4.7 inches deep or 23.6 by 17 by 11.98. So about 12 centimeters. I love these for my juveniles. The only problem is they outgrew these rather quickly. And what we're going to be putting them into for the adult enclosure is this one over here, which is a Sterilite clear view latch. I love these. I have a bunch of them, probably 20 or 30, probably 
25, we'll say. There we go. But they're about 17 inches by 11 and an eighth by six and a half inches, or 42.3 by 28.3 by 16.5 centimeters. These are great for larger terrestrials. I have a lot of Formictopus, some Zenestis in it, some Pamphibedius in it. It gives them room. They're all very, very calm in them, which is great. So it means they feel confident. We're going to give this one a burrow, but we'll talk about the setup in a moment. So let's get this one, the first one, out. What we're going to do is simply, we, you got to remind me to get the... Uh, the blueberry limeade one, blueberry lemonade. Oh, okay. Because that's actually more my speed. I like, don't get me wrong, I get, I like limeade, but the blueberry one is just, mmm. It's hard to find, too. Maybe that's why we don't have a lot of them. All right. And what we're going to do is open the top. Easy. Oh. Easy. Keep this over here. Yeah, there we go. In the enclosure. Gorgeous little spiders. Again, this one's looking very conservative right now, but I have a larger one. I'll try to get some shots of it afterwards. It's the one that we rehouse into the M Design container that is definitely showing purple on the femur femurs. And I believe the common name for these is something like fluorescent pink. They have all these kind of common names. They make no sense. But supposedly these guys get a very brilliant purple, almost like a mature male Cancerides, but a different color purple than the deeper violets of the Dominican purple. And that's why I like to call it Dominican violet because it's more violet than purple. But they look stunning. Hopefully we'll see some of that soon. I'm thinking the one that's in the M Design container next molt should be showing some amazing purples, but who cares? It's a Formictobus species and they're absolutely gorgeous. So as far as the setup in here, what we have, my typical setup, about two and a half to three inches of substrate. This is a mix of my own of cocoa fiber, shredded sphagnum moss, and peat. And I have it moist for the time being. What I usually do for these guys when they're slings, it's moist. When they're juveniles, I keep part of it moist. When they're adults, I give them a water dish and keep part of it moist, let it dry out, moisten it, dry out. Wintertime, I keep things a little more moist, but they seem to be very hardy and do well in a myriad of conditions. We have the sphagnum over here, some nice Galapagos brand sphagnum moss, which apparently is dyed. People have asked about that. I haven't had any issues with it. It looks great. We have a cork bark hide. I put an extra big one in here, so hopefully this one can dig down in there if it wants. Enough substrate for it to burrow in. This is the shredded sphagnum moss. And of course, leaf litter. And what we will be doing is dropping a water dish in. Actually, let me just drop in its other water dish for now, and we'll come back later and I'll just stick this over here. Here we go. Water dish. A lot of times I forget to put the water dish in. I'm afraid people think I'm not putting it in. And if you notice, this is well ventilated. For this one, I think I used the soldering iron, right? It's the thing I use to make the holes. We'll go with that. The little pointy soldering iron to make the holes here, and I put them all around, so it should have really good ventilation. So with winter, rapid, well, not rapidly approaching. We're in fall now, but it's going to be getting cold soon. I want to get these guys into something bigger, allow them to do a little burrowing, get comfortable. All right. One down. Hold it there for a second, and I'll get this one. This one's a little more shy. And we'll probably be doing the other one. Right now, the other one's got some room because I did put it in a larger enclosure. We'll be doing that one soon. So same setup, basic setup here. Mixture of peat, cocoa fiber, some sphagnum, sand too. I also dump it a little sand. We got some moss, which I have not moistened down yet. And then the cork bark hide so it can go in there. I'm kind of curious to see if these guys do a bit of burrowing because they've seemed to appreciate the ability to burrow. And that's one of the things. This one actually was using its burrow until quite recently. Oh. Right. That is a, a little threat posture. Look this water dish out of here. I'm reaching in with my hands, but it's completely blocked off. So I'm up here. I'm going to put this over here, but I am going to empty it out, clean it afterwards, or replace it. So let's get this one in here. Watching way too much South Park lately. <laughs> That's a threat posture. I don't know if you're catching that. That's perfect right there. Yeah. yeah. 
There we go. And are we getting any of the purple tones on this one? Oh, a little bit, but I don't know if it's showing up. I'm probably hitting it way too much light, but there are some purple highlights on the femurs. I'll get the flashlight off of it. You can see a little bit. The Again, as I mentioned, the other one that's in the larger container just molted and is definitely showing some purples. I mean, the problem with it, and I'll speak a bit about this in the introduction or the outro. The part about it is for me, this is a disaster. There are tons of quote unquote, and every time I say species, I say quote unquote, because we don't know if they're different species or just something somebody found that they're not sure what it is and it's already been discovered. So I think a lot of things on the market are just different color variants of cancerities. But uh, this is one that did look, in the pictures I saw, the people that grew them up, it did look different from anything I've ever raised. And so far, the colors it has gone through to get to this point where it does look like a cancerities have been different. So as far as, be uh, as, far as behavior, as far as behavior, as far as behavior, these guys have been a bit more skittish. They burrowed a little bit longer. That was actually the first threat posture I've ever received from one of these. I do get occasional threat postures for my Conceritus, and they can be rather intimidating, except for the fact they never really have their fangs out, and they usually just flip over backwards and look like doofuses when they do it, and I actually find it to be kind of cute. I have a bunch of footage of just mine every once in a while. I startle them with a cricket, and they freak out. Next thing you know, they realize they're being fed. They flip back over and grab the cricket. Temperature-wise, again, temps up here. The summertime, it's usually high 70s to mid 80s. During the wintertime, usually right around 73, 74. Actually, the road they're on will be around 72. We do get some cooler days. It gets super cold outside. The heat can sometimes struggle to catch up for a couple hours, and the temps will drop a little bit. I've never had any issues with them. The Formictivus species as a whole have been some of the most hardy spiders I have ever kept out of anything. And as far as growth rate, these guys started a little larger than I usually get my Formictivus species, and they've grown a little more slowly. I think, again, that's be attributed to the fact that they were a little less zealous eaters than some of the other ones they'd eat, but I couldn't necessarily throw in larger prey items. They were a little sk skittish around them. They did burrow. A lot of the other ones, they'll sit right on the surface. You drop in a large cricket, and this cricket could be the size of them. They'll just tackle it. And these guys, not so much. And I also should say that in the last couple of years, I've reduced my feeding schedule just all around. I'm not feeding them as aggressively as I did before because I am seeing that for some species, it can shorten the lifespan a little bit. Is it a lot? No, but if you have a spider that can live to 12 years or instead it lives to 10 years because you fed it so often as a sling and juvenile, that is a decent amount of time. So I have slowed things down just a little bit. So there we go from Mictopus species by a Hebe, neon pink bird eater. Somebody was selling it as I'm pretty sure that was just kind of a made up name, but all the common names are made up. I thought there was something else, some purple something or violet something, but we'll definitely keep people updated as to how these end up looking when they get some size on. I'm hoping to see some, if they look as pretty as the pictures I've seen, I will be more than ecstatic. And honestly, even if they end up just being there, you know, from Ictopus species, Dominican purple, because by Hebe is in the Dominican Republic, then who cares? They're awesome spiders. I don't mind having a few extras. So again, if anybody out there has these and they're already larger specimens, please let us know what they look like. It sounds to me like they will get purple, and that's what I'm kind of holding out hope for, really hoping that they get purple because there's nothing cooler than a big purple spider. And obviously, Formictibus species get quite large. I have many of my Formictibus now are over the 8-inch mark. Some of them are around 8 and 3 quarters inches. So those are huge spiders. So imagine just a big, giant purple spider. It doesn't get much better than that. So I will continue to monitor these guys and probably do updates. If one of these guys molts out and sports, you know, brilliant purple and pink tones, you can bet your butts I will get some shots of it and get it up there so people know. Because unfortunately, what ends up happening is these new species that are being offered on the market are being sold for exorbitant prices. So you're talking sometimes $200, $250 for a sling. And that's expensive, especially if you find out later on it's the same species you already own. So for example, I believe it's my Formictibus species Salinas. They are looking very, very, very similar to the Formictibus species green femurs that I've raised up in the past. Maybe it's the same species, maybe they're not, time will tell. But Formictopus is currently a mess, and until somebody goes in and takes a closer look at it and describes them, it's just going to be guesswork as far as the hobby is concerned when it comes to buying new Formictopus species. So that will do it for this one. You guys know the drill. If you liked it enough to subscribe, I really do appreciate it. You can click the little circle up there. If you're like, hey, what is this guy about? Is this, does he do other videos? What is, what is he doing? Whatever it may be, check out some of the videos. I'll put two of them over here. Check them out. 
If you take the time to comment, I will take the time to respond. But do know I'm back at school. It takes me a little while to get to them. That'll do it for this one, guys. As always, stay safe. Catch you all next time.